Hey guys, so recently Tara and my boyfriend had to go to the hospital. It was a regular night, we were just at home, and he'd been complaining about stomach pains increasingly throughout the night. I kept saying, do you want me to take you somewhere? Do you want me to take you to the hospital? And it was nighttime, so all the clinics were closed, but he kept saying no, no, because he felt that it was just a stomach ache and it would pass and he just wanted to sleep it off. I kept coming back and saying, like, you should really, we should really go to the hospital, like, and this is not normal. And he just kept trying to sleep it off, but he couldn't sleep because he was in so much pain, so, like, finally, after he'd thrown up a few times, he agreed to go to the hospital. And I'd pretty much been sitting in my room just waiting for that to happen because, like, what else am I gonna do? We didn't even have time to grab anything, any thing that he might need because he was just in so much pain at this point, he wasn't even thinking clearly, and we just, we just left, and I drove him to the hospital. It was like 3 a.m. at this point. We didn't even know where to go. So we get there and we check in and there's a bit of a wait because there's other people there and they're on limited staff in the middle of the night. And finally they take him in. And I didn't know if I could follow because the door like closed. And then they were like, oh yeah, you can go through. So I went through and I found him sitting in like another waiting area where he was um, throwing up into the garbage bin. And I kept trying to tell him like, they have these bags here for you to throw up in. But he was just just couldn't even process what I was saying. Eventually they had him in a room and they were awaiting the results or something and then he was just sitting on this tiny little bed thing and he was like cold and he didn't have anything, he didn't have any of his stuff so I, at that point I basically said okay I'll go home and get all your stuff. I think by this point they had him on a morphine drip which thank god because he was in so much pain. And that's really hard to watch when someone you care about, I mean anyone, but when someone you care about especially is in that much pain. It's, it's just a, it's a strange experience because at that point when, you know, they're in the hospital hooked up to a morphine drip, you're like, oh, this could be something really serious. Well, that's why it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the tests came back and he had an inflamed appendix. It was basically about ready to burst and if he had, you know, just tried to sleep it off, like he might not have been alive in the morning, which is really like kind of scary to think about that the line between somebody just suddenly not being there anymore is like it's such a thin line and um they ended up keeping him overnight because they wanted to get him into surgery as quickly as possible by the time i left the hospital it was 7 a.m i left to go get some sleep and because there wasn't really anything else I could do at that point because he was just there and he was pretty much just going to be sleeping as well. The next day, I think the hospital called and they told me that he was going into surgery. Thankfully, we were able to take him out of the hospital that day, which we weren't sure we were going to be able to do. We got another jacket? Yep. Yeah. It was just sort of, it's sort of this surreal thing where everything else gets put on hold because that's like the most important thing is, you know, someone's life that you care about. When did you take your medication? I was very sore um, and sleepy. I kind of was surprised it was my appendix just because I thought that was like a sign that you get as like a child and they were like, yeah, we need to remove it like now. So within like a few hours I was getting operated on. It feels like time travel because you're like suddenly in one room and then like you blink and you're in a completely different room in a different time. So I think that's kind of fun. It was really weird seeing him like that because normally he's like making jokes and sort of a bit more energetic and it was really weird to see him just so out of it for so long. Aww. The way they do the surgery now is they have like one tube that goes through your belly button and another one that goes here and another one that goes here. Which one's your belly button? What? Is that one your belly button, the top one? No, it's... Oh, that one. Wait. This one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And they have, like, three little... They're really tiny. It's, like, really easy now. Uh, but they hurt a lot because it was all internal and just, like, ugh. It was really hard to sit up. When I was in the car on the way home, I was, like, sitting, like, this the whole time because I couldn't, like, crunch. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, do it. 
whatever you want, baby. I slept a lot. I remember I cried to the doctor. I cried because I felt really guilty because the doctors and people around and the nurse were like really, really nice to me. <laughs> I felt like I was inconveniencing people by like potentially having a stomach ache, just a stomach ache. They were like super nice and I was getting really emotional about it. It worried me that he would be in that much pain and not want to go to the hospital because he thought it would probably be nothing. I'm just really glad to have him safe and sound, and I will be keeping an eye on him, for sure. He's like a little Tamagotchi. You're trying to get my belly. It doesn't even look like anything. Like it doesn't look like anything. If you're unsure if something's wrong with you, you should probably get it checked out if it's bad enough. Sometimes it's hard to tell when it's you because you're like, ah. Even like, if you're supposed to know yourself best, be like, oh, it's just, just need to sleep it off, it's just a stomach ache. It might not be. And I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who was super supportive and sent me, like, um, cards and a bat and gifts and stuff. It was, like, really, really helpful. And I want to say thank you to this big guy. Because <laughs> without him, I would have been at home, probably dead. And not only did he take me to the hospital, but he also took care of me while I was in bed for all that time. So, thank you so much. I Aww. I really, really appreciate it. I'm glad you're alive too. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to whine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm alive and healthy thanks to you. So, uh, yeah. You yeah. guys will see him another day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.